Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to talk about sublimation the easy way. Um, my name is Allison Zuccaro, and we're going to be going through um, not a ton of slides, um, but some good videos and some good content um, based on uh, sublimation. Um, one of the, I mean, there's a lot of different things that we're going to talk about highlighting some um, ways to add sublimation into your business and some ways to be profitable with it, some tips and tricks on how to do heat application um, with sublimation if you're not doing that already. So, um, you know, please feel free at any time during the webinar to utilize the chat to go ahead and type in there. Um, and I see we've got some, some experts here because everyone's typing in where they're from, which is great. We love to see that. So thank you so much. I see some North Carolina, um, Virginia, Texas, Florida, all over. That's great. Um, so, but please use that chat um, at any time to ask a question. Um, we have my friend Stacy on, on with us today. So she'll be interrupting me or answering questions um, when it's relevant and hopefully we'll get some things answered. Um, but we do have a lot of content for you. So I think this will be really, really, really great. So let's get started. We're gonna talk about sublimation the easy way and we're really talking about the basics today. What is sublimation? What is it used for? What are the... Um, um, the pros and the cons or, you know, you know, what are the challenges of sublimation? Um, where is it detrimental? Where is it going to add? And then we're really going to focus on how to do some fun things to add to your business. We have a couple of really good videos um, at the end that will show you some fun decorations to use for sublimation. And then we'll walk you through the, um, the upload, the stalls upload, so I can show you how to upload a piece of artwork to us and where the sublimation transfers are located. So if you need uh, service products, we can definitely support you there as well. So let's go. So sublimation basics, what is sublimation? So sublimation is literally um, a chemical dyeing process. So it utilizes inks um, from um, different, there, there are special sublimation inks that you use in special sublimation paper in sublimation printers. So it's not just a standard inkjet printer. There's definitely some finessing there. So um, it's a sublimation ink, sublimation paper, and a sublimation printer. You print the ink onto the sublimation paper with the sublimation inks, and there's there's a ton of different ones out there. We'll talk about those a little bit also. And basically what happens when you heat apply these inks onto the fabric that you're heat pressing it on, the inks convert into a gas and the gas literally switch, switches places and it goes into the garment. And then as it cools, it sets back up. So you're literally dyeing the fabric. And that's a really important thing to keep in mind and understand as we move forward and we talk about sublimation and a couple different reasons, um, a couple different things you wanna keep in mind when we talk about dyeing fabric. So whenever we dye a fabric, we're always usually talking about starting with a blank slate or a blank canvas because we're gonna add color to that. And sublimation is no different than any of that. The other thing that you have to keep in mind when we're talking about sublimation and dyeing fabrics is that we always want to use whole fibers. If you have hollow fibers, such as cotton, when you sublimate something, the gases go into that long elongated fiber. And we love cotton because it does have a hollow fiber. So it's really breathable and it makes us very comfortable, but it also doesn't give anywhere for the ink to go. So it just kind of it gases out or escapes. Um, so those are some things that to keep in mind when we're talking about sublimation. Um, so it is really kind of a science experiment, if you will, and it's kind of fun. And that just with anything, there's always some good, uh, you know, trials and errors and things that will go. But um, we'll go through and we'll talk about, uh, you know, some of those and how those work a little bit. So it's a chemical process. We use sublimation inks, sublimation paper, and we dye fabrics. Okay. So the advantages and limitations. So when we talk about advantages, quality imaging, the color vibrancy with sublimation is amazing. Um, it, the colors are just really amazing. As long as you're starting with a high quality image, you will get a high quality print. So 
if you're using you know, a, a 72 DPI piece of raster image artwork that you've downloaded from the internet that's meant to be a thumbnail image, when you print it, it's quite possible that you're gonna have some pixelation in there. Um, however, if you have a high quality print and you print it, and when I say quality, when we recommend, when we do digital printing, whether it's sublimation or any digital printing, we recommend at the size of your finished transfer, that you have 150 dpi minimum so if your transfer is going to be four by four when you enlarge that image to four by four you should be looking at the dpi and you, it should be a minimum of 150. the higher um that is the better the quality of print that you're going to get or the better quality image you're going to get at some point that kind of maxes out obviously. So, um, you know, 300 or above for sublimation is probably unnecessary. Once you hit 300, you're, you're pretty good. You're probably not going to get a ton more um, quality out of that. So 150 to 300 DPI per inch at the image size that you want your finished print to be. A, a lot of times raster images will come in at either really big or somewhat small. And what you have to know about DPI is that when you have a raster image, it doesn't change. So if you have something that's 10 by 10 and it has 300 dots per inch, there is that is a set number of dots that are in that image. It's not going to get any bigger. So when you enlarge it, let's say you take a 10 by 10 to a 20 by 20, you double it in size, the dots or the pixels in that image don't go up with that. They remain the same. All it does is it spreads them apart further. So then you can see them more. And that's where you get pixelization looking um, images, not sharp, not crisp, not clean. And I kind of liken it to that crazy fuzz on your TV screen when it's loading like a new cable and it's coming in in little dots, like that's that's kind of the vision I get. So something to keep in mind when we're talking about raster artwork. Um, and a lot of times sublimation is going to be raster because with sublimation, some of the advantages is that you can get gradients and shadings. And a lot of times when you're using gradients and shadings, you're getting that from raster image um, elements. So it is it is amazing for that, but we want to make sure that we start with a nice quality image. Vector artwork is always great. So that's amazing as well and always the best way to go when you can. But sometimes you just have that, you know, all the gradients, shadings and effects that you cannot achieve um, or is more difficult to achieve in a vector image than what you'll get with a raster image. So uh, another huge advantage of sublimation is the feel. So like I said in the very beginning, sublimation is literally dyeing fabric. So you're taking a soft fabric or a coarse fabric, whatever you're, whatever you're doing, and you're dyeing it. So because you're dyeing it, the, the image has no hand whatsoever. Once you have a piece of sublimation fabric um, that's actually sublimated, you can't feel it. It feels like it's one with the garment. So it is probably the softest hand as far as transfer technologies go in the industry. Um, so quality images, vibrant colors, and a super, super, super soft hand. It also, because it is dyeing the fabric, is going to stretch with the garments too. So that's great for performance wear. You don't have to worry about um, stretching the image out or having any issues there because it's gonna it's gonna go it's gonna ebb and flow with your with your uh, weave if you will. Limitations we're gonna talk about 100% polyester only, and that goes right back to that conversation we had about hollow fibers and that sublimation gas having some place to go. So polyester is a whole fiber. It's man-made. It's solid all the way through. So when you dye a polyester fabric and those inks go in with sublimation, they're going to have some place to grab onto. It's not going to gas out because it's not going to be hollow. It's going to grab on and it's going to dye the whole fiber. Now, there are some people out in the market that um, pride themselves on sublimating um, blends. And 
it, I've seen it done. Um, there, it's there's definitely an effect or an artistry to it. It gives you kind of a distressed look and finish because you're going to have some areas where the dye is saturated really well because it's grabbed onto the whole fiber, and some areas where the cotton is where the gas just kind of escapes a little bit. So you're not going to get a real consistent look. And sometimes if you're looking for a distressed look and you want every garment to be original because everyone's going to be different. Um, it is definitely a look. The important thing to know here, though, is that when you do that and you try to experiment with sublimating onto some 50-50s to kind of achieve that effect, if you will, you have to keep in mind that there is a launder cycle as well. So that's the back end of the side. It might look great going out the door, but a longevity of a print on a 50-50, just a flat out sublimation with no special techniques or inks or anything, um, you're going to have some durability. It's going to de degrade a little quicker than if you were sublimating onto 100% polyester garment. So something to keep in mind, and you can kind of do your own testing as you play around and see what you think. Um, and then white or light colored garments. And again, this ties back to um, you're dyeing a fabric. So when you're dyeing uh, a fabric, you want to start with the cleanest, you know, brightest slate that you can. And that goes back to the color vibrancy. Um, sublimation is going to always look best on white, um, pure white. We have uh, a lot of sublimation blank suppliers that have a gray, a very, very light gray that they recommend in sublimation blanks. And then there are some that have some um, pastels out there as well. So um, that's all good and available as well. But just know that if you use any hint of color, the color that you sublimate is not gonna be exactly as you may see it because you're adding that color in. So light hues won't make such a big difference, but just something to keep in mind when you're doing that. All right. So what do you need to do sublimation? So it, it really is um, a one, two, three type of thing. Um, in this case, we have Stahl's Custom Logo Services, which is what you can do if you don't have a sublimation printer and you're not looking to get a sublimation printer. Um, you can utilize our services. We can make the sublimation transfers for you. And we have two different things, and I'll go into a little bit of detail um, about both of those. So we have custom logo sublimation transfers where you can upload your artwork to us, and we will print it out for you on sublimation paper and send it back to you. And you can see in this image, we've, we've got the transfer on top, and they're peeling it away, and you can see that it's been applied. Um, and you would receive the paper in from us. Or we have another product that you can get that sublimation patterns. Um, and sublimation patterns is a really, really, really fun way to add patterns um, and texture. Well, not really textures, but patterns to different things. So if any of the, uh, you are familiar with our, ca our um, CAD cut patterns, where you can go online and create your uh, custom patterns or different color palette patterns, we have a ton of them out there you can also get those in sublimation sheets now. So um, versus getting a vinyl that you would cut out on vinyl cutter, this would be a pattern that you could trim, um, cut out. Um, and I'm gonna send you a link at the end to a um, video that uh, Jenna did recently where she sublimated some personal protection equipment with some of the patterns and it was really cool. Okay, so. Obviously, you're going to need some sort of sublimation transfer. So that's going to be something you get from us or, you know, somewhere. Um, you're going to need a heat press. When we talk about heat presses ideal for sublimation, we've noted here fusion slash hover press. Stalls sells a press we call a hover press. Um, and then obviously we have a fusion. The important thing to know here is that it, it's not necessarily indicative of our specific hover press when we say hover. What we really mean is if you look at this fusion photograph, you can see the top platen is parallel to the bottom platen and the center and, and, and the pressure uh, adjustment when you lower it, it comes down from the center and pushes out. OK, and this is really, really, really important because when you heat apply sublimation transfers, 
the, the biggest tips, one of the biggest tips that I can give you is you want to make sure that you have even platen placement across the way because as soon as that platen, that upper platen hits that transfer, it's going to start to activate and sublimate. And we want to make sure that it's hitting all at the same time. So you have a nice even push and all the way out. So it's really important. Stalls presses, the fusion, and our clam style machines, our auto clam styles, have center pressure always. So even the clam styles, if you notice and you watch one really closely, if you have one, if you pull it down, and when it gets to a level plane like this, you'll see it looks just like this. The top platen is parallel to the bottom platen. It doesn't pinch in the back. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, we highlight. So if you're using a Stahl's Fusion or, or Auto Clam, you're good. If you're using another style of Auto Clam heat press, um, you're going to want to be cognizant of that and kind of check and see. Does it hit in the back first before or does it level, come down level? And that's really important for sublimation um, to eliminate any ghosting that you may have. And ghosting is kind of um, when the transfer shifts. So when it happens where it's pinching in the back and pushing forward, you're literally shifting the paper. Or when the top opens and it, um, the paper shifts before you get to peel it, then you can get ghosting. And ghosting is almost like exactly what it sounds like. It's almost like a copy of an image next to your image. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool looking sometimes, but it also can kind of be a nuisance um, if it's not really what you were looking for, which in most times isn't. So it's just something to be aware of. One of the other things that will really help with ghosting, and you'll see it in some of the videos that we, wa that we watch, is um, thermotape. So we recommend when you heat apply sublimation paper that you tape the transfer down, um, and that's going to keep it down nice and flat um, so that you don't have any issues with it and it'll eliminate it from moving or shifting. And that's going to be really, really, really important if you're using a clam style, especially the auto clams, because the auto clams pop automatically and just that popping creates a little bit of a vacuum or air and that can shift that paper. So if you use um, thermotape to hold that down, that's definitely going to help you. And then the last thing that you need, you need one or the other. So you need either to get transfers from stalls or you need to be able to make your own transfers. So you would need a sublimation printer. So that reminds me, I had a couple of poll questions I wanted to ask you. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to start this right now, I'm going to put that out there. If you can take a second and answer this first question, um, and that is, do you currently own a heat press? Um, and we'll just try to figure out who has, who has what types of tools available to them um, that they can use uh, to do the sublimation. So we'll just put that up there for another 10, 15 seconds, and then I'll go right into the next one because the next one is who has a sublimation printer. So we want to see how many of you have uh, heat presses to date and how many of you have uh, sublimation. So, all right, I'm going to end that one, and I'm going to go right into the next one. Okay, so the next one is, do you do you currently do sublimation in-house? So this would be, do you have a sublimation printer? While you guys are answering that question, we're going to talk a little bit about sublimation printers. So there's a ton of sublimation printers out on the market, um, all different kinds, all different models, all different ideas, just like anything. Um, there's always, you know, a, a bunch of different varieties out there. So a good variety of you do have sublimation, so that's amazing, about 50%. Um, and I would I would guess that a lot of you, uh, some of you have, um, you know, large format. There's large format sublimation printers that print, you know, rolls of material at like 50 inches wide that you can print down the length of a large roll all the way down to desktop printers that are just a standard, almost like an inkjet, that you know, sit on your desk that can print probably up to like 11 by 17, maybe 14 by 17 inch paper on, on one of those uh, larger format ones, but um, that you can do. Large format sublimation printers are used primarily when you're doing um, 
tapestries or very large flat surfaces or cut and sew sublimation. So when we talk about cut and sew sublimation, we're talking about an entire complete garment. So if someone is getting the whole entire garment or you know whatever product it is, is sublimated completely, um, that's when we're talking cut and sew and that's usually large format. So that's patterns. Um, sometimes that could be the front. They, they literally sublimate in panels, almost like a sewing pattern. For those of you that are familiar with it, you, you print a pattern, you cut it out, and then you sew it together. Um, that's a lot of the uniforms that we're seeing uh, today are a lot of cut and sew because they're fully sublimated. So when you see those bright, colorful ones all over from beginning to end, that's usually cut and sew sublimation, and that's large format printing. Or again, large um, tapestry printing too. There's also large format heat presses that will heat press um, some of those large format uh, transfers that we just talked about. So definitely all different kinds of ways that you can do sublimation and all different kinds of prints that you can use. So let's see, it looks like we might have a couple of questions. So I'm going to just take a little second here before we go into some of the videos and I'm going to see what we have. Well, one question that came up, which I think is important um, just for everybody. So I'll say it out it loud. It looks like um, someone's asking if you can sublimate onto nylon. And um, there are some nylons out there that are sublimatable. I won't give, give a blanket statement and say all of them. Um, because, you know, there's some things to, to keep in mind, but there are definitely sub, some sublimatable nylons that can be. So um, that's great. And Pilar was kind of answering that. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Um, but there are quite a few questions. So I'm sorry, scrolling back up here. Uh, hey, Allison, there was yes. one that I wanted to make sure you saw from awesome. earlier. Yes, ma'am. Um, Dorothy wanted to know if there were any restrictions with how thin the polyester can be. She said it was for like gauze-like material. I wouldn't say there's any restrictions to how thin it would be. As long as it's 100% polyester um, and it, 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 it will take it, you're going to be okay. A couple things to keep in mind, though, is it is possible if the polyester is too thin, that it will sublimate right through. So in that case, you would want to make sure that you have a throwaway type um, sheet on your bottom platen because you would not want to dye that bottom platen with a sublimation ink um, because that will probably transfer to the next one and the next one and the next one. So you're going to want to make sure that you, you plan accordingly if you're doing something super thin. Um, and then the other thing that you want to keep in mind, and one of the things that I should have mentioned when we talk about 100% polyester is um, sublimation goes on at high temp, so 385 degrees and up uh, high temperatures. There are some economical polyesters out there, even in the white, that when you heat print at that temperature tend to scorch. Um, so you just want to be conscientious of that when you're picking out substrates. There are a lot of manufacturers out there that sell specific sublimation blanks that are just specifically for sublimation. They're rated and do really well at the high temps and you don't have to worry about scorching. So if, if you're getting something from one of those suppliers that sublimated rated and it says sublimation blank, you're good. If you're getting something from you know a, your, your regular t-shirt supplier and it's not rated for sublimation, it's just a standard 100% polyester white, I recommend um, you test first just to make sure that you don't run into any problems with scorching. So um, very good. Okay. Sorry, I'm scrolling up because it looks it's like okay. I... there was another one from earlier that I just want to make sure it doesn't get looked over. Um, somebody had a question about the blank apparel, specifically the book bags. Which uh, websites would you recommend for outsourcing the blank apparel that you're wearing today? There's a lot of them. Um, a lot of what I have done, what we use internally for testing, um, comes from Coastal. Um, they have a wide variety, um, and so um, Coastal is a good one. I know we have done some others from um, Viper Apparel has a variety of them. Um, there's a lot. Um, if you just if you just Google sublimation blanks, you will find your your standard fair 
and there'll be industry um, not there'll be industry leaders like like I said, Coastal, Viper, people that will come up that will you know definitely have sublimation blanks and and there might be some that you've never heard of before that have something original or different. So, um, but we do we do a lot when we do internal. We use a lot from Coastal. Um, we have a relationship there and that sort of thing. So that's definitely um, an option. Um, okay. Perfect. And then the um, one last question, just yes. this is from way down at the bottom. So I just didn't want to get missed. Somebody wanted to know what the, um, the wash cycles were like for sublimation and the longevity, like how long those items would last. Well, the great thing about sublimation is you're literally dyeing the fabric. So it's not going anywhere. It's pretty much permanently affixed. We wash test everything to 50 washes. So provided that you heat apply it correctly and accurately onto 100% polyester sublimatable fabric and you don't add bleach, um, you should get some really, really great longevity. You may see when, you know, you get end to, toward the end of that 50 washes, you might see a little bit of... Um, um, transfer, I don't want to say transfer, uh, mm, loss of color in, in, in it, maybe some fading, but that I would argue is probably more likely to like the pilling or the breakdown of the fabric that you've printed on more so than it is probably the ink. I mean, let's face it, you know, fabrics have longevity these days. So, um, but other than that, it's, it's gotta, it's gonna be really good. Um, so it's gonna last really well. Okay. So a couple other questions. I've kind of, I think, went all the way to the top of the questions and I'll just kind of go through because there's quite a few, which is great. Thank you so much. Um, so um, there's also a question, do you, you know, um, there's a recommendation to put paper between your shirts, again, a throwaway paper if you're doing different, um, different uh, thin garments and you're worried about the dye going all the way through to the other side, we recommend, and you'll see um, in the one video, um, sorry, Jen is not gonna do that in the video we're gonna show. When you sublimate onto a garment, we would recommend that you dress the platen. Um, so in the, uh, in the uh, idea of this hockey jersey, we would recommend that you open the shirt up and put it on the platen upside down. So the bottom layer or the under layer hangs below the platen. If you can't do that because the platen um, isn't isn't set up like that, you don't have a, um, a threadable type of setup with your heat press, you, we recommend then obviously that you use something in between the layers just to make sure that you don't get something all the way through the back unless, unless you want to, but more, more than likely you don't. Um, okay, let's see, what do we have next? Okay. How can you profit more in your business? So this is a, these are two videos that we're going to do in a second on um, how to heat apply flip flops and how to heat apply some bags. But there's still a lot of questions here. So I'm going to spend some time going through these questions first. And um, someone just asked a question, should the slides be changing? Not right now. We're just going to set it here for a minute. We're going to ask some of the, answer some of the questions and then we'll go on to some of the videos. So does the vinyl you're referring to require Caesar ink or anything other than standard dye sub ink? And I think that might've been an answer to a question from before that someone asked. So I'm assuming we're talking about uh, like I said before, you, you, we don't recommend that you sublimate onto darks. However, there are a lot of different, um, let's say, workarounds to sublimating onto dark garments. Most, all of those workarounds require another product. So it would be a sublimation transfer. And essentially what you would be doing is sublimating onto another fabric, 100% polyester product. So when I said you can sublimate onto 100% polyester, there are a lot of different things out in the marketplace that are 100% polyester coated, right? So there's a, a flock, for instance. It's a velvety flock. A lot of people in the industry are familiar with what flock is. It's 100% polyester, and you can you can sublimate onto a white flock and create a transfer that you then could heat apply onto um, um, ha uh, how you can heat apply that onto a dark fabric because that flock is, it's, it's a, um, it's not translucent, it's opaque. So you're looking for a product that can add opacity to your sublimation print. So flock is a good example. 
glitter flake. Um, Stahl's glitter flake is 100% polyester base. So you can sublimate onto glitter flake and then heat print that onto a dark garment. There are a lot of other um, vinyls out there, a lot of other um, products that you can buy from a lot of your sublimation suppliers that sell inks and papers that you can print onto and then press that onto an actual dark garment and it's going to add some opacity to there. But you are essentially creating a digital transfer. It's no longer a sublimation transfer. You're creating a full color digital transfer onto something else and know that you're going to end up you know, depending on what method you use, you're going to be using a sublimation, a vinyl, or some sort of polyester fabric. And then there's going to be some probably registration cutting, whether that's with a pair of scissors or with um, a vinyl cutter slash plotter in order to give you uh, to cut around the outside of that image. So there are a lot of things out there and there's a ton, a ton of content out there from all the different suppliers um, on how to do that, what the different methods are, what the different substrates are, so on and so forth. So um, that's a little different, but definitely something that we can go through. So, all right, let's see. Stacy's went through and highlighted some questions for me, which is great. Can you use the lower heated platens? We do not recommend using the lower heated platens with sublimation. Um, it, it's it's not that it's a horrible response, but when you do the lower heated platens, you typically you're heating, you're bringing your bottom temperature up higher than your top temperature. So, and then what happens is, especially with sublimation, when you put the t-shirt down, for instance, and it's on a heated platen and you put the sublimation paper down, as soon as that sublimation paper hits some of that heat, it's gonna wanna start transferring. Those inks are heat re reactive. So there is no chance for you to adjust that paper once you set it down to tape it. So if it's crooked, if it's there, you leave yourself very little room for air when you do that. So I would recommend um, staying away from using the heated lower platens. Um, when you're doing sublimation, turn it off, use your top. The other thing is you're going to want a nice firm pressure. And when we heat apply these flip flops, you'll kind of see. Um, so I definitely would not recommend using the heated lower platen. Um, can you sublimate skateboards? If, if I ha don't know 100% certain, but if you can find 100% polyester coated skateboard you know, the board, which it sounds like they may be out there. I don't know why there wouldn't be because there's a lot of other things. You absolutely could sublimate them. Sure. Um, I think some of the challenge that you would have with that is maybe the um, the curvature of the skateboard. So if you have to print up that curve and down that curve with a flat heat press, um, it might be a little bit of a challenge. You might have to do it in different pieces, but um, it sounds like a good experiment. So I'd be curious to see how it goes. Let's see, another question. Can you sublimate on Paragon shirts um, at that high temperature? You know, that would be something I would definitely test um, or, or definitely research is Paragon, you know, sublimation rated. What you want to look for when you're shopping suppliers for sublimation, again, 100% polyester, white or light colors, and then look at the care instructions. Like if it says do not iron, um, you know, you probably don't want to heat apply it at 385 degrees. Um, so that's definitely something, you know, to look for, one of the clues. And, uh, you know, another thing is call and ask for a sample or call and ask, um, you know, is this, can this be sublimated? Can this be heat applied at 385 if it doesn't do it, if it doesn't tell you? A lot of manufacturers and a lot of suppliers nowadays are getting really good at giving us a lot of information on um, substrates that kind of tell you the best print methods or the decoration methods that work really good. So that would be definitely something um, that you can look at. How do you prevent the melt lines that form on the sublimation paper edges on 100% polyester? What you can do um, when you talk about those, you know, those melt lines, those hard edges, if you have a design that is 
well, first and foremost is obviously trim the paper closest to your image. So that's the second thing. But if you have a design, let's say it ha you need to leave some white around, one of the things that works really well is um, almost ripping the paper, ripping the edges so that it has more of a, um, a soft edge versus a hard scored edge. So I know it sounds kind of crazy, but if you kind of feather or rip the paper's edges, it will um, soften those edges a little bit when you have that, you know, solid, um, solid line or that harsh line. It's kind of a optical illusion, I guess. It kind of creates a different um, on the eye. So one of the questions was, how do you not get ghosting? We talked about that a little bit, but um, it's important. So let's let's talk about it again. Two things for ghosting. Ghosting is caused when the paper shifts. So when the paper shifts during application or when the paper shifts when you peel it. So we want to eliminate paper shifting. The two biggest ways to eliminate paper shifting is number one, use a heat press that actually doesn't have any pinching or creates an air. So like I said, the auto clam, um, when it pops open, it creates almost like a vacuum. And a lot of times, sometimes when you heat press with a cl an auto clam, it'll pop and the paper will go right with it. That is um, a, a great scenario of when ghosting can be caused. In a situation like that, we would recommend that you use thermotape to tape the transfer down so that when that pops up, it doesn't go flying. Um, another, uh, you know, the fusion heat press or some of the other heat presses that are manually, um, you know, the uh, air machines work fine as well because they go down and they have center pressure and they hit the, the platen at all the same time, which is great. And then um, they don't, if they do pop open again, you just want to use thermal tape. So the heat press and the thermal tape are the two biggest things that you can do to ensure that you eliminate as much ghosting as possible. Wondering about using spray adhesive with the transfers on polyester fabrics. Um, that's a great question. I have not experimented with using spray adhesive. I think it would depend on what spray adhesive you use. I also um, think it would depend on how much you use. And I also don't know that the spray adhesive will necessarily be strong enough to eliminate um, the ghosting. I think the tape is a little bit better, um, especially because when I use thermotape, for sublimation transfers because it's going on at 385 sometimes for you know 30 40 seconds when my machine pops that is really really hot and it and sublimation is a hot peel so i'm trying to peel a paper i usually use the thermo tape to create like a little tab for myself so i have something to grab onto and peel um so that's why i have always used thermo tape um and you'll see it a lot so i don't know that that's a great question i think you have to experiment with that one a little bit so let's go to the um, videos that we're going to show. So we're going to talk about how you can profit more in your business. So some of the things that you can do with sublimation um, is you can do all the wonderful, fun things or the different add-on sales. So we've, we obviously know you can sublimate onto garments, right? So you've got garments, you've got you know, sublimatable caps, you know, your standard. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, ceramics out there that can be sublimated onto tiles, mugs, coasters. Then you have your accessories. You have, you know, um, key fobs. You have phone cases. You have um, mouse pads. You have all those types of crazy, you know, accessorized type things that you can get that are sublimated co or polyester coated that you can sublimate it onto. But some fun things that um, we found the last time that we researched this a little bit and tried to put some fun on were these really cool flip flops and then this flip sequin bag. And so the videos that we're going to show you next really highlight um these two applications and Jenna does them. Um, she does a really great job at our videos and, and she does she does both of these. Um, and the flip flops are really cool. Um, and the flip flops, I don't know if she highlights it, but they came from Coastal. It comes with a um, an actual pair of flip flops and then it, they actually give you the template for the transfer 
um, so that you can print it. And then heat apply it onto the flip flop bed and then put the thongs in. Um, and then the flip sequence bag. So this bag is two tone. So it's colored on the opposite side of the flip sequence. And then the sequence side or the white side is just white sequence. And those are, there's, those are polyester coated that you can heat print onto. So, um, but like I said, if you, if you start thinking about how to utilize sublimation, you can find all these really cool things that you can actually sublimate onto that you're using the same technology um, and just offering some fun different things. So let's go over to the video. So let's look at the flip sequence video first. And before I start the video, I'm going to mute it um, on my end so that I can kind of talk you through it and we can watch it together. Um, but if you don't mute it on your end, it is quite possible that you will hear the sound. So if you're hearing the sound, mute the video on your end, and then um, you shouldn't be able to hear it. Okay, so it's a get this look that we did, sublimating um, the flip sequence. So again, coastal business, reversible sublimation, drawstring bag. We used a heat press. This is a fusion. We used thermo tape and a heat printing pillow, and that's because we've um, we have some seams on that bag. And then we did a, a CAD print sublimation transfer that we got from that we ordered from stalls. Obviously, we printed it in house. Um, and you can see we flipped the sequence to get the white side. We're actually placing the bag on top of the pillow. We're aligning the transfer paper on the bag and we're literally taping the transfer to the pillow. So um, the pillow is a non-stick coating, so it's not gonna stick. Um, and we did 395 for a minute and you're gonna peel the paper hot. Um, and then you can see it's literally like you change that whole color and these flip sequence they have flip sequence bags they have flip sequence pillows the pillows are actually just the shell that you print onto um, they have um, some flip sequence blankets they have all different kinds of flip sequence things that you can get but this is a huge full color a fun 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 look personalization so that was Emma's bag um, her ballet bag that she probably puts her ballet supplies in and whatnot so really easy, but just a really quick um, idea on that. And then the more intriguing one is the um, actual uh, flip-flops. So this is really a good one too. So we're gonna do the same again. If we're you, gonna do uh, a mute pair it, of flip-flops. Then you won't hear okay. it. So they come like this. So you right? can so see this is what you're gonna get you from Coastal. Sure what John is showing right you is this, this Of course, we don't want the tongs Those to be flip already flops inserted are literally cut out. The holes are already get a nice punched flat for the thong sandals. So that sublimation and transfers it's correctly. Gonna be, um, These were sourced from Coastal Business than and they also offer a lot of other great sublimation fabric. So you're gonna wanna account for that go on their website and check out all they have to offer for sublimation. The first thing that Now before I place my transfer paper down, Make sure I grab another craft paper test the pressure, cover sheet so that um, the ink from the previous the, one doesn't the, transfer. Um, flip flop beds. The other in thing there. I'm going to do so she's is getting test a my clean pressure cover sheet because and she this item angles. has a lot more so density you can see, um, than my t shirt did. So I need to lock this lock down and make sure I'm adjusting my pressure and adjust the pressure so that it's because accurate. Remember, when we're doing sublimation, we want a, a firm pressure. So we, we want so like on a hot tronics fusion and you, you want to be, or to any of the hot tronics presses, where my you probably want to be in the 7 8 range. I went a little too light. And so she's testing the pressure with the flip beds in there and she's adjusting. Anywhere from she's seven at to a nine good pressure, a good firm pressure. So she knows where she's at. She's got her pressure dialed in. Or I thought she did, but she's getting close. <laughs> so um, she's going to swing that away and get that out of her right. way. And now and then I'm she's going gonna to take her sublimation, sublimation transfer, transfer. So this which, transfer was already again, templated to make Coastal sure actually supplies that this you with is the template. The and you can this, see the footbeds line up with artwork. the template. So all you have to do is and make sure they are, the, the template, template is a is smidge bigger than the actual the outline printable of the flip -flops just a little um, bit cutout so area. that you're getting it because you want to go edge here. to edge so you want to overlap a little bit 
And that's okay because you're going to punch those flip flops no, out. What's nice about and then you're uh, be sublimation left with an paper edge is you can print. kind of see the sublimation it paper sure is uh, does have a bit of transparency to it, so, so you can see through it opaque. enough to you line it up. Where the uh, design and that's what she's doing. And now she's going to get the and thermo again, tape. And she's going to do the same thing. Use my she's going to so tape this transfer no actually to the bottom plate so that you can see it's not going to go anywhere. She's literally taping the transfer right down to the bottom platen. And this thermo tape was And we're going to send you um we have the link to this whole entire piece. video that we're going to give you also sure um I use because she does like a lot of other things she just talks about help. sublimation in general and goes into right, some really so good depth that cover um, on what to do and things to sublimate with. From it. We're going to cover and it with a cover sheet and always sure use cover sheets right especially when you're doing sublimation. So we did drop it down for you never know where that ink can get away to especially like we talked about when you're doing those thin fabrics. This is just going to ensure that if anything place, gets on the and let uh, it count down for paper, me. So it's, it's not going to get on the platen the because if it's on the platen, and I don't have it's going to gonna worry transfer about to the next any one. ghosting because the thermo tape. Okay, so we're going to do. I think it was three eighty five. And I'm going to have a custom um, sublimated pair of flip flops for, uh, with somebody's monogram. I think like forty to sixty again, seconds, takes personalization but, um, to a whole new level. You're able to add an all as over it's counting down pattern for um, your customer as opposed to she's just explaining one basically all about the paper and the, the or digitally that printed we used and why she did that vinyl, such as some and of how sublimation is different than some um, of the looks that thin. she also has she's killing she time 12 more seconds um, but when you sure pop this open she's just gonna go ahead and peel here. the paper away um, Kimberly it's a hot asks, peel, is it hot or cold And then peel? she's literally going to punch out the, the flip-flop beds to the from that large piece that was surrounding them. Okay, so I can remove this. Okay, that was surrounding them. Okay, so I can remove this. And now that it's away from the heat, I know my sublimation has cured. So I'm going to remove my tape, and then I'll remove the paper. And see how she's peeling the tape off of that bottom platen? See, and now you have okay. those flip flops so that are fully printed, and these actually the were a pattern with a monogram template. And I have fully sublimated flip. Okay, so that was all set, and then even with coastal, they give you the um, um, they give you the thongs and the little tool to uh, help you put the thongs back into the holes. So you have complete and utter sublimated um, flip-flops when you're done. So those are some of the fun things that you can do. And we're gonna send you a link to the whole um, video that Jenna did. It's about 30 minutes long. Um, it was a um, live demonstration that she did on all things sublimation. She talks about the patterns. She talks about a lot of different things. So let's see, it looks like there might be a couple more Questions. There is one question. How do you press a product bigger than the press? Um, with sublimation, that's going to be tough because it all happens at one time. So if you're going to do sublimation um, bigger than the heat press area that you have, um, the only way that I would recommend that you do it is in panels. Um, so print the paper and do the panel but you're if you have to butt them up and you're not sewing something like you're not doing a cut and sew there's definitely going to be a, some sort of line there that you can see you know i mean you'd have to finesse it a little bit in order to get it um but it, w with sublimation i don't know that it's as forgiving as some of the vinyls that you could like repress and get it hit hit again um, so, I mean, I'm sure that it could be done. I think it would involve a little bit of finessing. So there's a lot of questions about, um, sublimated vinyl, um, and if it requires special inks and so on and so forth. There are so many different options out there, um, for different things. It's going to depend, depend on what you're using and what inks you're using. If you're getting a sublimatable vinyl, um, whatever brand or product name it is, I would highly recommend that you research what the manufacturer of that vinyl is recommending for the best printing methods. In my personal opinion, um, there are a lot of other digital print methods that are available out there um, that 
I don't know that I would go through the steps of doing um, sublimation onto a vinyl because you can do, you know, a full color digital print with vinyls um, if you have, um, you know, any, um, um, sorry, resin printers, um, you know, if you have any of those types of printers that print full color digital printing, you can get CAD prints transfers from stalls that are essentially full color digital prints onto the vinyl that come to you already printed, already weeded, ready to heat apply. Um, Transfer Express also has some amazing full color transfers that you can get um, if you're, if you know, if you want some full color and it's going on the right fabric. Um, they have an ultra color soft, which is a full color digital print um, that you can get. Um, and it's very, very reasonable. So, I mean, if you have a sublimation printer and you want to utilize that um, in printing on some darks, you can definitely experiment with some of those different vinyls that you can use to utilize that in-house. But um, that is definitely going to be something that you're going to have to play around with and see what's going to work. I don't know that there is one single recipe that's going to work. I think it's going to be different for all of them. Um, but those, I mean, those are some great questions. There's just, there's just a lot of other options out there for printing onto dark. All right. So let's spend a little bit of time. I just want to show you um, the upload so that I can show you how you can, um, how you can actually send us your artwork if you want to, um, do if you want us to make the sublimation transfers for you. So I'm going to show you my screen. So we are on the stalls website. So when you go to the stalls website, the first thing that you should always do, um, if you haven't, and there's Jenna right there on the front page, um, you should log in. So if you haven't logged in, you should you should log in. And obviously Rick's logged in here. Um, if you don't log in and you go to upload artwork, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is log in very simple. So the first, if you want to send us artwork for anything, you're going to click this big white arrow up here at the top that says artwork uploader. Once you do that, it's going to take you to your artwork dashboard, or it's going to take you to the upload. Okay. So it's going to tell you basically, let's get started. What do we do here? There's a couple different options that you can do. And I want to highlight, um, I want to highlight a couple of them. So go to my dashboard will take you to any historical thing that you've uploaded. Okay, so anything that you have pending, anything that you have that you uploaded, that you have a proof on, that you're waiting to approve, that you've approved, that you've ordered, if you want to do a reorder, it's all there in your artwork dashboard. And if we go to this one, you you can see kind of what it says. But it'll show you um, the images that you've ordered before, what the artwork name is, what the design is, what it is, you know, how you ordered it, when was the last time you order it. And if you want to reorder any of these, you just click start order. You can always see what's pending, what's working. Um, it has green means that it's ready to order and it's it's approved or it's it's good to go. Yellow means it's in progress. That means you're waiting for stalls to do something. And red usually means we need you to do something. We're waiting for you to respond to a question. We're waiting for you to approve, approve, so on and so forth. So that's kind of the quick nitty gritty of it. If you want to upload a new piece of artwork, you click on the upload artwork button, which we did before, but I kind of circled back. There's two different things I want to show you. First is you can get a cost without having to upload anything. So if you have a customer that just wants a price and you know how, how you want to get it and you know how much it's going to be, you can just, you just want to find out a cost. This is the quickest down and dirtiest way to get it without having to answer too many questions. So we're going to do sublimation transfers. So we're going to talk about CAD prints because a CAD prints is our a sublimation transfer is a full digital and everything in our full digital print line is in the CAD prints. We're going to choose a digital transfer slash logo because that's what we're doing, a sublimation transfer. And then it's going to ask me what the options are. In order to get the sublimation option, I need to choose 100% polyester and I need to choose light because all of my selections here will minimize what my options are available here. So notice I have 100% polyester light. I have all these medias available to me, but one of them is a sublimation transfer. 
So I click sublimation transfer. It's going to ask me for the size. I'm going to put in four by four just to give us an example. And then as soon as I do that, it's going to give me a price quote. So it's going to tell me one through 24 pieces is $1.92, 25 through 74 is $1.76, and these are per piece prices. So it's still all square inch based. Um, the bigger it is, the more expensive the per pieces price is going to be, but it's going to tell you what the quantity breaks are, and it's going to give you your order minimum. So with all of our CAD print services, we have a $25 minimum order. That doesn't that then will tell you how many pieces that correlates to. So in this instance, four by four, you can get, you could get 14. That would be your minimum order. Now, a very uh, important thing to know about, note about sublimation transfers is you, what I would do if I was doing sublimation transfers and I had to do multiple jobs and you were going to have us do it for you is I would gang up all of your images onto one big sheet because we're going to print whatever you give us on a full sheet of paper and we're going to charge you by square inch. So if you do like an 11 by 17 inch paper and you put, I don't know, 20, let's say, left chests on that, we're going to print 20 left chests. You're going to cut them when you get them, but it, it will definitely help you um, drive the cost down because we're going to, we're going to, you know, print it however you do it. So don't um, fret too much about, like I said, if you want a four by four inch transfer, you're going to get a four by four inch transfer and we're going to put a whole bunch on a sheet and we're going to send you out, you know, big sheets of them that you're going to have to cut apart. So Matt capitalize on that with this product. We don't charge any gang sheeting fees um, with this product because again, we're just printing it right on the paper as you give it to us. So maximize the real estate, bunch of, put a bunch of things up together. You can put a full front, a left chest and a sleeve logo all on the same piece of paper and maximize that size in order to take advantage of that. So just something to note there. Um, so anyway, put it in, let's put that you want 14. And then the next thing that you would do is it's going to say, oh, quantity must be, yep, 14 or more. And you can choose upload art or you can hit close. You don't have to go any further if you want. If you want to upload the art, you can click upload art. And it's going to save everything that I've already populated. So what I can do now is just go choose a piece of artwork. Probably should have had something ready, but that's okay. We'll use a cut file. Let's see what do we have. Here, we'll just do this. Okay, so when I upload artwork in the artwork uploader, it's going to upload it, it's going to analyze it. What it's analyzing it for is size, and that's very boring, I apologize. Um, but it's going to, uh, it's going to, an and it's going to create the thumbnail so that you can see what the image is. So if this isn't the right file, the nice thing about it is you have a preview of it now. If you don't like this file, it's not the correct one, you can upload a new one. We've already chosen CAD prints. We've already chosen digital transfers. We've already chosen our fabric type and our color. Do you want it to be a split front? A split front is if you're putting it on a button down jersey. So if it's going on a button down, a real true button down, and you need the image to be split, you want a split front. We don't on this one. We It's already pre-populated sublimation transfer because that's what I chose. It's populating the size because I put in four by four when we did the quote. So it's transferring that. We size everything in our world, in Stahl's world, by the width. That's where, where we feel like most customers are. So it's going to default to the width. I can change that. If I want to size it by the height, I can change it. And then I could put four inches here. It's automatically going to proportionately scale my image provided that it's it's vector. It will do raster images as well. So we recommend when you do raster, you make sure that you're not including any additional boxes around it. So it doesn't need to be on a big box. You should eliminate the, you know, the white background as well. That'll get you closest to the actual sizing. Um, then we can put the name. This is what we want to call it. And then if we want any special instructions, like we could put make this a rainbow pattern and our artists will do that. Um, and then notice our price changed because our size changed, but it's telling me exactly what it's going to, I have to get seven or more. 
And then the, one of the most important things about this is that it's going to include your contact information. So it's automatically going to default to whoever's logged in. So if you're logged in as a customer, it's going to default to your login from the shopper um, window, but you can change that. So if your shop has one login to the stalls um, shopper external online ordering, you can put your name and your phone number and your email address in that box. And that's important because that's where all your communication is going to come. So when you have a question or we have a question for you on size or color or anything like that, that's where that information is going to come through. So you want to make sure you give that information in there. Once you get everything populated, you're just going to hit submit artwork. And then it's going to take you to your dashboard and you're going to see it. The next step to this is it's going to go to an artist. They're going to review it. If they don't have any questions, they're going to create a proof for you. You're going to then get an email that says your proof's ready for review. Please take a look at it. You can take a look at that proof and then your options will be proof approved or proof rejected. If you reject it, you can put why. It'll go back to an artist. An artist will fix it and you'll get another email notification that there's a proof available. If the proof's ready and you like it, you hit approved, then you're going to get an order now button. You'll be able to place your order, check it out, pay for it, and receive it in the mail. So it's pretty easy peasy with regards to um, um, to upload. And I encourage you to utilize upload, you know, as much as possible for some of these things if you're not doing in-house printing. Hey, okay. Allison. Yes, ma'am. There are some questions uh, regarding the uploader you just showed okay. with like margins, sizes of sheets. Can you answer those really yep. quick? Because we're already past four yep, o'clock. Thank a look. you. Somebody wants to know if you put several images on the sheet in the size box, will you be putting the sheet size to get the quote price? Yes, you're going to want to put the overall sheet size in the size box um, because that's what they're going to. That's what they're going to. Uh, printed at. So whatever size you want the whole sheet to be is the size you want to put in the quote box. Absolutely. Good question. Heather wants to know if she's ganging up everything on a single sheet, how much margin is needed? Well, with the nice thing about with sublimation transfers is there is absolutely no um, contour or cut line that needs to be there. We're literally just printing the image. So with sublimation transfers, you're going to want to put enough room in there for you to get your scissors in there. So I, I would recommend, you know, at least uh, I would say like 0.18 would probably be a good margin. I mean, me, I would just go quarter of an inch because that's easier for my brain to process. But um, you're going to want to maximize it as much as you can. But remember, you, it's just for you to get your scissors in there. So whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, Kevin wants to know, how do you add the multiple designs? He was saying it only lets him add one unless he did something wrong in the process. You cannot add multiple designs to upload. What you would want to do in the gang sheet case is you would want to design it in your artwork designer as a sheet. So whatever you're doing, whatever software you're using to create your artwork, if you have a Corel or an Adobe or any of those, you want to bring all of your images into one and your essentially creating one artboard or one sheet with a bunch of different images on it. And then you're going to take that and save it. And then you're going to upload that because it's, we're going to treat it. Our upload is going to treat every single um, upload as its own image. So we're going to treat that like one whole image when we talk about sublimation. So you can't do it in the uploader. You have to do it in whatever artwork uh, graphic software you're using. And then a couple of people wanted to know what the max sheet size is for this. So the sublimation print technology that we use in house is very large format. So we can get really, really, really big. Um, I think I think our material is like 50 inches wide um, down the length of a roll. So um, typically I recommend customers say like when we're looking at when we've priced out different things, I, I would say I would be comfortable at like 20 by 20. Um, when you put 20 by 20 in, you might have a little sticker shock on the size of the sheet. Um, but, you know, it may work out to your advantage, especially if you only have to order 
one sheet and, and that's all you need to do the images. So you kind of have to play around with it a little bit. I know the um, the pattern prints that we're doing, I think it was like 11 by 14 was the sheet size that we were doing. So again, you know, 20 by 20 would be comfortable to print, comfortable for you to handle, comfortable to ship in a box. Um, because we want to make sure that it doesn't get damaged when it's shipping either. But our capacity is we have a very large format capacity. So that's that's not an issue. Perfect. A couple more questions. Uh, Michael wants to know, what is the turnaround time once it's approved, your artwork? Great question, Michael. Thank you. Um, artwork ships within 24 hours of approval. So with a, a 11 a.m. cutoff. So if you had your artwork approved and placed today by 11 a.m., it would ship today, same day. Um, after 11 a.m., which especially when we're dealing with a lot of West Coast, that's that's a little aggressive, um, it would ship tomorrow. So uh, it, unless it's a really large order, when I say really large, like over $1,500. So, you know, if it's, if it's a standard um, normal order size, it ships same day or next business day. And then one last question, because I know we're pressed for time. Um, a few people were asking, and I know there was sound issues going on with the videos. Do you recall off the top of your head the pressure that Jenna was using for the flip-flops with the heat press? Yeah, so it was, I believe she got it to an eight, but it was a medium, it was a firm pressure. You're always going to use a firm pressure. She was testing the pressure out because if you watch the whole entire video, she does a, a shirt or something very thin prior to that. And so she needed to adjust the pressure. Anytime you put another product in that's thicker or thinner, you want to adjust pressure for the product that you're printing on because that thickness is going to throw the pressure off up or down. So that's why it took her a little bit to dial the pressure in. But I'm pretty sure it was about an eight. I also did post the YouTube link for everybody to watch Jenna's video from start to finish. Um, awesome. I knew that was an issue, so everyone can check that out too. Oh, just a quick thing, and I we didn't get to it, um, and maybe we can send it out, Stacy. Jenna did another video this week on printing sublimation. Um, it was printing personal protection equipment, but she specifically focused on neck gaiters, and it's on the the Stalls TV YouTube channel. Um, and it's it's literally printing neck gaiters. But for those of you that don't follow the YouTube channel, it's definitely something that you you could should do because there's a lot of information there, and that's where we pull a lot of the videos from. But it stalls TV, and she did it, it. I think she did it yesterday, actually, or last week. But it was very recent, and she does um, at the very end of the video. She sublimates. She uses the CAD prints patterns in the sublimation that I uh, talked about. And she sublimates onto a neck gaiter. And it's really cool because she does the front in a stripe, a red and white stripe. And she does the opposite side in a blue and white stars. And then you, when they when they put it on, when they show it on the mannequin, it's the stars and stripes right down the middle in the front. And it really, really makes a really nice looking effect. Um, and those are some of the patterns that you can get. Um, and it was printing on a neck gaiter. And I know... PPE stuff is hot right now. So face masks, um, neck gaiters, all of that kind of stuff is really hot. So um, it was just kind of a good tie-in uh, to see a different way to heat press some of it. She does a lot of vinyl too, but um, at the very end, she does a sublimation. I think that we are good then. We had a um, lot of information I told you. I uh, was worried about filling up the time, but we had some great videos and a lot of good questions. So I really, really appreciate everyone's participation um, and sending the questions. They really do help. Um, there's a lot of networking and a lot of people answering each other's questions. Um, and, you know, a lot of you are doing sublimation in-house, clearly, so you have some experience with it. So I really appreciate that. That's really, really amazing. Um, and that's what it's all about. So if you haven't, like I said, subscribed to the Stalls TV YouTube channel, I definitely recommend you do that. You just go to YouTube, search up Stalls TV, and then subscribe to it. You'll get updates. But there's a lot of really good video content there. The nice thing about that is that you can watch it at your leisure. Um, and that's where the video link that Stacy's going to send you for Jenna's full video. But there's a lot of great information out there. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for 
putting up with the issues with the sound. I do apologize and appreciate that. And thanks for all of your great participation. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again sometime in the near future.